All right, in this problem, we have to find the value of x, and we also have to find the measures of line segments AB and line segment AC. And it is given that triangle ABE, which is the smaller triangle on top, is similar to the larger one, ACD. Now, whenever you're dealing with similarity, you are dealing with objects that are proportional to each other. So what we're going to do is we are going to set up a proportion. Now, whenever you have a problem where you have a larger triangle and then you have a line that goes across through the middle of that triangle somewhere and it is parallel to that base, that smaller triangle is going to be similar or proportional to the larger one. And something else interesting is occurring here. We could say that the ratio of this line segment right here as compared to this line segment right here is going to be equal to the ratio of this line segment here compared to the length of this line segment right here. So what we're going to do is we are going to set up a proportion that reflects that reality. So this entire line segment from A to D is equal to 8, which means A to E must be 3 units. So what we can say is the ratio of 3 to 5 is equal to the ratio of x plus 2 to 6. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use cross multiplication to set up an equation from our proportion. Because remember, when you cross multiply with any proportion, we should understand that we are going to get equivalent values. So let's start by taking 5 and multiplying that by x plus 2. So we're going to write 5 times the value of x plus 2 and set that equal to 3 times 6, which is 18. We're just going to do that mental math real quick. Now we're going to distribute the 5 to what's inside parentheses. So that's going to give us 5x plus 10. And we're going to set that equal to 18. Now all we have to do is solve for x to find the value of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this plus 10 and move it to the other side as minus 10. And that's going to give us 8. Then we're going to slide 5x down. And divide both sides by 5. And we end up getting a value that is an improper fraction, which is okay. We can just say that the value of x is going to be equal to, or is equal to, 8 fifths. All right, now that we know what x is equal to, we can plug that in for x and figure out the length of AB. And then we can add that to 6 to find the length of AC. So let's just start with line segment AB, which is equal to x plus 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x plus 2 and substitute in for x 8 fifths and add that to 2. Now, whenever we're adding fractions, we need a common denominator. So let's go ahead and turn this whole number into a fraction by writing a 1. Whenever you have a whole number, just writing a 1 at the bottom keeps it equivalent because 2 divided by 1 is still 2. So we have not altered the value in any way. Now we have to have a common denominator. So what we're going to do is we are going to change this 1 into a 5. And to do that, we would have to increase that by a factor of 5. And to keep the value equivalent, we have to increase the numerator by 5 or a factor of 5 as well. So 2 times 5 is 10. So we have 10 divided by 5, which is still a value of 2. So we did not change this value in any way. We just rewrote it in such a way that allows us to add it to 8 fifths. So we're dealing with the same units. And how many fifths do we have? We would have 18 fifths. And if we wanted to express this as a mixed number, we would have 3 and 3 fifths, which is the length of line segment AB. Now, if we took this length right here, 3 and 3 fifths, and added to 6, this line segment plus this line segment of 6 would be equivalent to the length of AC. So let's go ahead and take 3 and 3 fifths and add it to 6, which only requires us to add these whole numbers. So let's take 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9, and just slide our fractional part over. So the length of AC is equal to 9 and 3 fifths. 